Hey everybody, thanks for joining early. I'm Jenny Sauer. I'm going to host this uh, Gypsy Moth training. I wanted to direct your attention to the chat. I put a couple of links in there that might help us out um, during this training. One is to where you might find lots of other training documents and, and videos that might help support this one and including this recording which will will end up making its way to that website within a few days if i can get it done and then also a link to a quiz that we'll have at the end and that quiz gives you a little automated email that says you completed this training so that might be something you want to pass on to your supervisor or hold in your back pocket or put in a file of accomplishments somewhere. So that quiz generates that email that you completed this training. So you're welcome to open that quiz and take it as we go. We, If we have time, we'll even do it together. I have no problem with you kind of using it as a study guide as we go. And there's nothing too hard today. Last year, I liked giving like the early birds just a little minute of a cool, maybe an aspirational quote or something. Um, and this year I've been doing something kind of funny to bring our humanity back. Uh, I've been reading this How to Live Like a Lady book a little bit, and it's because I have kids and, you know, trying to teach them how to have manners and things. And um, so I've been just sharing these for how to bring us back to um, maybe we've gone a little feral by being in our home offices and doing all these virtual meetings. So um, some tips on five tips on making an award winning entrance. So when you come into a meeting, how you might do that, um, according to Miss Universe 2005. Um, and she says, accomplish all petty tasks before crossing the threshold. Remove your coat, arrange stray hairs, blow your nose. So get things done and be ready to be here. Avoid fumbling in your pockets, looking down, looking away, or looking angry. That's obvious, right? Stand up straight and tall, inhale deeply, think grace, confidence, elegance, step through the doorway purposefully. Enter, then pause for a second to make sweeping, wordless, and ever so brief eye contact with the occupants of the room. Do not dally at the doorway. Move on and in. Extend a hand to shake if appropriate or pronounce a simple greeting to your admirers. So with that reminder, welcome to the Gypsy Moth training. I'm going to share my screen and stop sharing my video. There's many of us here, so just a reminder to keep yourselves on mute. And if you wouldn't mind, turn off video. It will help you out with your connection while I share my screen, and I will do the same. So bear with me just for a second, and I will open that up. So welcome to End User Tools Presents Asian and European Gypsy Moth. Data Collection Using ArcGIS Collector. I'm Jenny Sauer. I'm with PPQ End User Tools, and this is the second offering. You can find recordings at the website www.aphis.usda.gov forward slash plant health forward slash mobile tools. And the first one is already hosted there along with some documents that will help you in using this collector app to collect data for Gypsy Moth, both Asian and European Gypsy Moth. Again, there's quite a few of us, so this is going to be you on mute, I'm sorry, you're gonna to have to listen to me the whole time, and it's gonna be very focused and fast paced. So save questions to the end, or also alternatively, feel free to add them to the chat. I may not get to them today, but I, so I may not be able to address your issue immediately, but if possible, I will definitely contact you and we will find resolution for any questions you might have along the way. Newbies, hopefully you've completed all the pre-course viewing, et cetera. It brings us all to the table with the same knowledge, but if not, this is something you can catch up with on the tail end and reach out if you need more information on what you should have kind of in your pocket. As far as training, oldies, oh, that's not the right term, right? <laughs> but those of you who have done Gypsy Moth data collection in the past, this hasn't changed significantly. You'll be able to grasp this quickly, and you are the trainers in the field, so help each other out, help the new ones out. So get out your notebooks and be prepared for a quiz at the end to test your knowledge. So what are we going to talk about? We're really just going to talk about what's new and then take note is a section where I like to talk to you a little bit about some of the issues of data collection in the past 
or maybe point to some things that might be a little confusing for users that are new. Um, hopefully, uh, you users who are accustomed to this are just going to go, ah, mm -hmm, yeah, that's right. And so we're going to do what's new separately for Asian and um, European Gypsy Moth. So let's get started on what's new for both of them. None of this is scary. It's got a new base map to use. I'll show you what that looks like and how to kind of toggle in and out of it. There is also available a reference layer for last year's trap sites, 2020, and a, couple, a field addition. We now have a year round field, and that's just a yes, no, and it's defaulted to no. And so you can toggle that on and toggle it to yes if that applies and why that was added. So it allows the end user tools to transfer your year round trap sites into next year's map and saves you time and trouble to map them out again. Some field moves the agencies, surveyor, and install date were moved from the main trap site data form and it's placed on in both cases Asian. Gypsy Moth and European Gypsy Moth, that activity data form just reduces some redundancy there. Nothing scary. You all know how to fill out a form and you just kind of roll with the punches. There are some changes that are new to European Gypsy Moth only. And what it did was removed these four fields that are still present in Asian Gypsy Moth. Previously, these maps were one and now they are separate. And so those fields really only applied to the Asian Gypsy Moth and that's where they are now. So, so far so good, not too hard. What's new for both? There is a trap workflow that is new and that is that as soon as you have placed that trap, initially you hit that little plus button and fill out a data form on that location which was placing a trap. Now that requires an activity entry of install, and I'll show you what that looks like shortly as well, but this is really important. All those previous updates I talked about are kind of small beans. You hardly notice them in a pot of chili, <laughs> right? You open a, a data form and you complete it, and you make sure that you're being consistent and you submit. But the major change is this workflow for placing a trap. And it's already being reported that some of some are already collecting data for Asian and European Gypsy Moth, and this is an incomplete data entry. So if these um, are not completed, you'll be asked to do this. So if you are aware that you're one that's not yet used this install activity data field, then you want to go back and update yours. What it does is this install feeds the trap placements um, for the next year and it shows that it was actually installed and it's bringing it consistent with all other trapping data collection. So we're bringing Gypsy Moth up to that consistency pattern. Just to review, let's kind of stroll back through last year's training and review how that place a trap workflow looked. We had this little workflow where you, you walk to the location and you hit the plus button on the collector app, which opens a data form. That's placing the trap, completing that data form. And previously that was that. And every time you visited the trap again, you, uh, you would add a trapping activity. And this is our list here, monitor, replace, remove, um, inaccessible, all of those. But now what you have to do, the very first thing is install. So this falls under a trapping activity and it should be the very first trapping activity that it's been installed. So that was our workflow last year, but we've added is this step to install at the very start. And that first step of placing the trap really stores information on the trap location, but it doesn't inform us what's been done until we enter that trapping activity of install. So we have to do that. Um, so that's a big, big new thing. And if you fail to do that, well, in the field, you'll be asked to do it later. Well, the data QA, QC process decides it's been overlooked. So we don't want that. Let's do it right to start with. And um, what happens is it's a vital piece of information for program managers who might be reviewing the data through dashboards. It is, if it's not recorded, it just might appear that no traps have been installed, that it's a site with no trap. So that's important. So let me show you what that looks like on the iPad. Let's install. So e both the um, 
European and Asian gypsy moth maps have a training version and I have the Asian and European and you can see I've done my homework and I have created an offline area for both. So these can be collected without being collected without being connected to Wi Fi, but I'll tell you I'm in my basement and I am connected to Wi Fi because our GPS is probably not working under all this concrete. So I could open either of these. They have the same function of needing an install and I'm going to go into the Asian Gypsy Moth map and into my previously downloaded offline area. And I'm going to go ahead. You can see the little blue dot is my location and I have a few test points here. Um, but these are, of course, really just play points. So this is not real data at all, and this is in a training map. So let's go ahead and place a trap. We start by hitting this plus button. Of course, you fill out the data form based on survey protocol, which I don't have anything like that in my back pocket. So I'm just going to randomly, in order to fulfill these required fields, indicate that it is a test. Trap by D I'm also just going to indicate is a test point. Survey type is inland. I'm just going to. Again, these are completely incorrect, but I'm marking them as tests and Notice this field here year round is labeled at no. All I have to do to change that is toggle it back to the option yes. I'm going to leave it at no and hit cancel. And make sure that I notate test everywhere. So normally this is what you would do probably with very different fields. Um, look it over and make sure that it's all complete and everything is as it should be. I'm actually going to move this point out here just so that it's easier to see. I'll hit update point, which is overriding my GPS location. Um, that's not what you should be doing in the field, but hey, we're just demoing here and then hit submit. And just like any other offline map, it's going to store this as now a little dot showed up here on the sync icon showing me I've got an edit to sync, but I'm not done. I've placed the trap, but I now have to install. I have to perform that activity of install. And so while it's still highlighted, while it's still highlighted in blue, which shows me that it's selected, I can either hit this link button or scroll up a bit to where I see a link to the Asian Gypsy Moth trap activity table. Tap that and then tap add. I'm going to fill this out again. This brief little survey and the activity type here we want is install. So there's install. I have no field sample ID. Here's something of note. Some of you may have remembered this bug from last year. Hopefully this gets fixed one day. Obviously 1899 is not the activity date. You want to be very sure that you have tapped this and also tapped today. You see that updated us to the timestamp of right now and we want to make sure that that's up to date. So then again, check over your data form for this install activity. Everything looks good. Sometimes I'll hit today one more time just to make sure I'm totally up to date and submit. And there we go. We have placed the trap and installed it. So that's a big change for us um, this year on both maps. At this point, we're now at take note. And this kind of reviews some of the things you just saw from the iPad view. That activity date of today is a big one. My way of making sure that I've got today is to go back at the very end and tap today. That updates you to now as a timestamp. And then the other one that's sometimes a, a real um, question mark for some is the relocate workflow. And I created a whole separate video, just a little bonus feature film, if you will, for Gypsy Moth on this workflow. So be sure to take note of that if you haven't already. That's already hosted on the web page and it, there's a little YouTube video, but let's do it together today as well. So normally you would place a trap, then every trapping activity after that would start with install and then maybe some of these every visit. If you want to relocate a trap, your first action is to remove, do a trapping activity of remove on the existing trap. 
and then you want to go to the new location, pick up that trap, go to the new location and place the trap. What's missing by some is that when you relocate a trap, you also want to update the trap status of the old trap because Gypsy Moth has trap status as a field and it could be active or inactive. And you may have noticed the symbology changes as well. And we'll look at that in a second as well. An inactive trap is a pink X and an active trap is that yellow diamond. So you want to remove do that trapping activity of remove, but you also need to update the trap status to inactive if appropriate, unless it's staying active and it probably is not if you've removed it. So that trap status update to inactive is important and has been missed a lot. And then also some feel that if you have marked it as removed, that that symbol should disappear. But that is actually really not the case. And the reason being that that is a very vital piece of the database. That trap there should not be deleted. It should exist. The symbol should remain and the last trapping activity should be removed. Then you go ahead and pick up the trap if you're moving the same one or placing a new one. Go back to the top with this arrow to placing the trap and then again don't forget the new trapping activity on that new trap of install. So let's have a look at what that looks like. I'm going to switch back over to my camera view. So here we have this trap that we have just placed and installed and let's say it's not selected. I'm going to X out of everything and just touch the screen. The first step you would do is let's say I want to move this trap up into this corner of this field. It's not doing so well down here. It needs to move. You have to tap that symbol to select it. So see now we're selected. We're going to want to change the status, so we have to edit, which means choosing this pencil button or scrolling up to where you get edit and tapping that. And that activates all the fields for changes or edits. So now I can change this to inactive and submit. And you see that symbol changed to a pink X, which means it's now inactive. And now we want to add a trapping activity. It's still selected. So we're going to add a trapping activity, which will be remove, remember? So we're going to do remove, and we want to again make sure of this activity date is today. So we check that all over. That looks good. OK, that looks good to me, and submit. So now that activity has been updated to remove as the last activity, and if we go to this activity list, got to exit out of everything, you'll see that on this trap site, the first activity was install and the very last one was remove. So the symbol remains, but the last activity was remove. Now in order to place that trap where we want it, we would start at the beginning of our workflow where we would hit this plus button. We're going to move that trap up into that little corner and update the point and start back at the beginning with our data form and we're going to fill out this form carefully and we're going to install so we're going to add that trapping activity of install so i'm going to stop there because i think you get the gist of that workflow but that one has been a little bit confusing for some of us in the past so that's a big take note let's go back to this list here the trap status of active in inactive you should be checking this very carefully when you relocate a trap, but certainly every time you visit a trap, any activity done on a trap, that trap status should be reevaluated and updated if that's appropriate. So that's just a little reminder there. And the last one there is that we operate in disconnected mode. That's a big benefit of this application that we have the ability to operate with a workflow not connected to Wi-Fi, and especially for some of us in these rural areas where that really is the only option. There is a video and there's several explainer videos that you might build upon to help with demonstrations and some detailed explanations on how to use Collector. Um, it involves downloading a map area. There's the disconnected mode workflow that you might be familiar with, and it, it shows up in all of our manuals as well for you as a reference guide. But you got to disconnect from the internet once you have done this work in the office, and that means connecting to a really good Wi-Fi source, downloading that map area as I did today for the demonstration to use. I did that as homework previously. Then you disconnect, collect the data, come back to the office, 
connect to the internet and sync that data back to the database. So these are our big, our big kind of reminders. Don't forget that activity date needs to equal today. The relocation workflow um, involves remove, but does not delete the point on the map. We want to be sure we're updating the trap status if it's active or inactive. And we want to be using that disconnected workflow for optimum optimum use of this collector app. Which brings me to, um, you know, when do, sometimes these all of these videos and all these documents and a training like this with reminders might still leave you with some kind of funky issue and it happens where we're just stuck, you know. So where to go if you need a little bit of help is kind of listed here on this slide for you all. Now, I hate to send everybody to Anthony, but he is the excellent uh, resource for all things Gypsy Moth. So if it's a protocol question, which I certainly can't help you with, if it's a request for training um, or other support on the Gypsy Moth application or data collection, Go to Anthony Manson Hing. He's the National Operations Manager and very active and ready to help. If it's an iPad issue, usually this is an issue with maybe technology or getting it configured or um, a problem with the application just not working as expected. You should open a ticket with CEC IT. Currently, PPQ has a specific configuration for their iPads, which is just called PPQ only. So if you specify that you have a PPQ iPad, those CEC techs should know exactly what to do. If they don't, we can reach up higher to group managers, etc. But that's who supports our iPads start to finish. Portal access or collector application um, questions you might want to follow this kind of hierarchy of one, two, three. Go to your supervisor, of course, always with any issues. Your supervisor might reach out to the local field GIS specialist for your region and may also in tandem email this webgis.connect at usda.gov. This email address is monitored by a group, so you have a good chance of lots of brains to solve a problem if it gets to be at that level. So these are some of the resources that you can go to if you need a little extra help. At this point, I would ask that you open that link to the quiz. Yes, it went that fast. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is open that link up so that you see what it looks like. First of all, this is the website link that I put in the chat box and we'll share out with you as well. You can see here we've got Asian Gypsy Moth and European Gypsy Moth documents for you and a video gallery. The pest program videos are right here and you can see the last Gypsy Moth um, training and also the relocate workflow bonus video that you can watch right here on this website. So handy dandy website. All right, so the quiz um, I will leave you to take later, but I want to show you what it looks like so you're not afraid. I'm just going to go through this first page. You want to make sure this question three has your correct email address. This can be um, your if it's your if you're an external user, a state cooperator, it can be e any email address that you want this completion email to be sent. So make sure that's happening there and you can see it follows the same pattern of what's new and then take note is the next page. So take a moment and take this little quiz as soon as we're done. What I'd like to do is open it up to questions and see if anyone has any. So I would ask if there are questions to please raise your hand and I'm happy to try to do that or if there's something that you would like to see again. This flew, didn't it? <laughs> Um, OK, well, if there are no questions, just know. That you can reach out to all of us. I'm going to ask Anthony if you have anything to say. Our first training, you had a little announcement and I didn't give you that chance today, but is there anything you'd like to share with the group while you've got them? Well, yeah, of course. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> let me make my entrance. Hello. <laughs> there you go. So thank you, uh, Jennifer, for that really outstanding presentation. This is this is uh, cutting edge stuff. So one of the things I want to, since I have all of you captive audiences, I one of the things I want you to do while you're doing your work, as you engage your uh, state cooperatives, please encourage them 
uh, if time permits, to, to showcase this this application, this software, the tools we use. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is that we are, as you all know, in the middle of implementing uh, DDII. And one of the things we want to encourage state cooperators to do is like, look, uh, we want to showcase some of our software. Uh, you know, those states who are currently doing detection survey work uh, on using their systems or perhaps just a pen and pencil uploading into IFAS, uh, here, here are some of the things that's out there. So I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, I do have I do have a quick I made some notes here some quick questions here for Jennifer uh, making my entrance again as usual uh, a, a very practical question on on uh, doing surveys I know we the the surveys typically have iPads can can this be done using um, iPhones I know it's probably a small screen and you probably don't see as well but is it feasible to do this over an iPhone the answer is yes. Um, our recommended standard device for data collection is the iPad Mini 5. That's, I'll just say that. But you can collect this data. The, the app works in the same way on the mm -hmm. iPhone. And they are meant to, to interchangeably work on the iPhone. They're not so great on Androids. And so the government official phone tends to be the iPhone. Um, mm -hmm. The downsides are, yes, it's a smaller screen, so there's more potential for error, more fat fingering can happen, it could be harder on our eyes. Um, the other thing is that the iPad works very well in offline disconnected mode and it avoids kind of glitchy half synchronizations back to the mm. database. The iPhone overrides that all the time. It's constantly trying to use Wi-Fi and cellular data to connect. So there is some risk of some um, more technical issues with using the iPhone, but if that's what you have, um, that certainly beats pen and paper, doesn't it? And so we we don't want to hold anyone back from the tools that they have. Excellent, excellent. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, there there's some limitations and handicaps there. Yeah, appreciate that. Uh, quick question on we talked about um, installing being a new activity. Um, trapping activity before we do stuff uh, and again I, I, p I apologize in advance um, when it's all done completely when you know all the steps is there a, a, a confirmation on the screen that says yes you have completed this correctly and installed is done correctly yes you have completed this correctly and installed is done correctly is, no is, um, no, it's up to okay. the user. It's up to the user to know that what will happen is QA QC will come back and say there's all these traps that have been placed, but there's no install activity. Go do it. So do you okay. want we don't want you to have to go back and do this because that mm -hmm. completes the of course you can also select the symbol and look to see that your trapping activities list install. So it's a way to check yourself. Um, and see that listed. It'll always be listed there for you to view uh, on a trap symbol. The other thing we've got here is a question, or maybe it's not a question so much as a comment from Gary Kristen, that his IT specialist has no idea of these maps. Um, and that seems fair because IT doesn't create these maps. What IT would know about is a configuration for the iPad and supporting iPad technical difficulties or issues. So they are unaware of most of our data collection applications and the details around them. They just help you install them and hopefully make them work. So um, I'm not not to cut IT slack. I, I do want them to do their job, but that is kind of outside of their expertise, Gary. So I would say that's a fair statement, however difficult it makes it to connect with them. Um, and always reach out to end user tools group if you need more support with IT understanding what you need. Anything else from you, Anthony? No, I'm good. Thank you again. Okay. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. I will say that this uh, this training goes smoothly because of you all being here on time and participating in the way that's asked. Please take that quiz. I'll be reaching out for some feedback, which we always want. We need it. We can't do better without your help, and uh, we're looking for that all the time. So these trainings are on your shoulders. So. Just reach around, give yourselves a little pat on the back. Thank you all for being here and please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you.